I'm in a block of five-year-old Honeycrisp apples. Uh, this location is where we have a CATS trial that has gone on. What we did in this trial was looked at five gallons per acre applied three times through the drip irrigation. So five gallons was applied uh, sometime around full bloom, then again about two weeks later, and then finished up with another five two weeks after that. So what we're going to do here is we're later we're going to see if we can measure an increase in calcium in the apple core and flesh itself. And that'll give us a good idea of how efficient we were of getting calcium into these trees. Now we've been using calcium on apple trees and uh, cherry trees actually for probably close to 25 years. And we don't have a lot of data that really goes along with it. What we find is that growers really are interested in calcium. If there's one thing they know, they need to put as much calcium into the fruit as they can. So that includes uh, maybe cats through the water. That includes foliar sprays of, uh, of uh, chelated calciums or calcium chlorides or other calcium products on the market. They almost spare no expense when it comes to getting calcium into that fruit because calcium is the storage nutrient. Um, it's no different than if we were talking about blueberries or raspberries or onions or potatoes. Fruit in general needs calcium to strengthen cell walls within the fruit. And if you have a strong cell wall, then they're going to store better, handle better, ship better, uh, have less um, uh, internal disease problems. And in the case of uh, apples, especially these Honeycrisp, a bitter pit, which is a low calcium problem within the flesh. One of the first trials they ever did on apples in the mid 1990s was on a variety of apple called Brayburns. They were kind of the the honey crisp of their days and that the honey crisp are really susceptible to bitter pit, so are Brayburns. And when I got the research material, what was interesting is I got it kind of late and I was able to get uh, five gallons of cats onto the acre on Brayburns uh, through the uh, microjet sprinklers. I put it on in uh, late July, waited a couple of weeks, put the second five gallons on uh, the first part of August. That's really kind of too late to put calcium down, but since it was so late getting the product, I thought I'd give it a try. And what was interesting, and we put it on and this microjet is spraying the tree, spraying in between the trees and plus the cover crop. And I'm thinking, this is never going to work. We're just not able to place that calcium well enough. Well, when we harvested the trial, much to my amazement, the check area, uh, when we picked it, had 6% bitter pit in it. You can see it by the black flecks on the flesh, which means that the, the tissue underneath was decaying and dying because of a lack of calcium to keep that uh, cell wall pressure up. Where we treated with the cats, we actually uh, reduced the bitter pit from 6% to 2.4%. And like I said, I, I was stunned to see how well that worked out. Because of that data, the cats pretty much got going on, on the tree fruit, uh, apples, cherries, anything else, uh, uh, pears. Uh, where they know they need calcium, it just kind of became part of the program. We've never had a lot of data other than that to show its worth. So I think this this um, Honeycrisp trial is going to be give us some really good uh, data and uh, something that we can tell the grower that hey, it uh, looks like our timings are right, and this is what we need to do. So it'll be it'll be good to get this data. Now, in general, the apple growers will use cats application uh, through the irrigation system at uh, full bloom or a little earlier wait a couple of weeks put another application on normally around 10 gallons per acre per application and then they'll call it good some of the growers that have been using cats for over 20 years they'll go with a mid-season application too which uh, may be just five six gallons uh, about late July just to make sure they get some additional calcium on because you have to understand that calcium is taken up by 
um, apple trees, onions, potatoes, it doesn't matter. And from the soil, it's taken up through the root system. And then from the root system, that calcium is distributed to the root shoots and fruit. So that's how calcium gets in. Now we can foliar apply calcium just like we would uh, on this tree, for instance, and we can foliar foliar spray and we'll hit that, that apple right there. Well, that apple can take up calcium but it only takes it up on the surface. It won't get deep into the cell of the, of the plant. So, so foliar works okay. You can, you can foliar feed the leaves and you can get into these leaves like right here and that calcium will get into the leaf, but it won't translocate from this leaf to the fruit because to get from the leaf to the fruit, you have to go through the phloem tissue. Calcium will not um, translocate to the phloem only through the xylem or the or the water conducting tissue so that's how you get calcium in the plant either spraying the fruit directly or putting it on and having it taken up through the root system now one of the advantages of cats is not only are you uh, bathing that root system in soluble calcium so that we can concentrate it get it up into the tree and into that apple but, but it's attached to a thiosulfate. The value of that thiosulfate is that in the soil, that thiosulfate has to oxidize. And in the process of oxidation, if you've got free lime in the soil, uh, you will solubilize that calcium, and that calcium then becomes available to be taken up by the root system in the tree. So for instance, if I'm putting 10 gallons of cats onto the acre, uh, that's six pounds of soluble calcium that gets right into the root system and right into the distributed throughout the tree and the root shoots and fruit. The oxidation of the thiosulfate uh, at 10 gallons to the acre of cats will solubilize enough um, uh, calcium carbonate to add another six, maybe seven pounds of soluble calcium that's also available to be taken up by that tree. And it doesn't take all season to get that done. It'll actually get that done in about a two week period of time. So, so the combination of the calcium thiosulfate is kind of the best of both worlds and can give you more calcium into that tree than what you're literally putting on. The other thing about timing of calcium, calcium needs to go on early. If you think about it, we're putting it on prior to full bloom or at full bloom, then again, when that fruitlet starts to form, which is about a millimeter in size, very, very tiny. And it makes sense. Um, a, a millimeter size fruit has all the cells it needs to give you an apple this big around. So what we wanna do is, is, is jam as much calcium into that tiny piece of fruit that we can get so that when the fruit starts to expand in size, we've got the calcium uh, in the cells internally into that plant, into that fruit. And then all of the other foliar sprays that we're gonna do in season end up being uh, just additional calcium to help build that level up. So the key is, is the concentration of calcium in the fruit. And again, not to beat a dead horse, but these um, honey crisp are notorious for bitter pit problems. They need probably more calcium than any other apple variety out there. All the apple varieties uh, need calcium. It's just some varieties need more than others. And Honeycrisp tends to be uh, um, uh, on that level of needing a lot of calcium. Now the cats is just a part of this program. Uh, we have a good chance of increasing uh, the calcium in, in, the, in the fruit, which we're gonna find out in this particular trial and get an exact measurement. So what we'll do is uh, when we get those, uh, that data and we'll measure the, the amount of calcium uh, that we find in these uh, uh, fruitlet formation or in these apples, when it's time to take those core measurements, we'll probably wait another month or so. Uh, we'll make sure that we get that data to you. So until then, We'll sign off. Thank you.